Good day everyone. Welcome to Teacher Julie channel. Hello everyone. We have our new lesson in Science 8 which is all about photosynthesis. This will be the first quarter topic, week 7 and day 2. And this lesson is under the Matatag curriculum. For the objectives, by the end of the lesson, 80% of the learners will be able to First is to define the photosynthesis and explain its role in the growth and survival of plants. The second one is to accurately observe and interpret the result of the grandeur of photosynthesis experiment. And the third one is to develop a sense of wonder and appreciation for the intricate process that sustains plant life. For the explicitation, the students will watch the following video. After the students will watch the video, the students will answer the following guide questions. For the first guide question, what is photosynthesis? Photosynthesis is the process by which plants, algae, and some bacteria convert light energy from the sun into chemical energy in the form of glucose. This chemical energy is then used by the plant to fuel its growth and other vital functions. For the second guide question, what is the role of photosynthesis in plants? So, photosynthesis plays a crucial role in growth and survival of plants. So, the first one is for energy production. So, photosynthesis allows plants to produce their own food in the form of glucose, which they can then use to fuel their metabolic processes and growth. The second role of the photosynthesis in plants is for oxygen production. So as a byproduct of photosynthesis, plants release oxygen into the atmosphere, which is essential for the respiration of other living organisms, including the humans. Another role of photosynthesis in plants is the carbon dioxide absorption. So plants take in carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and use it as a raw material for photosynthesis, helping to regulate atmospheric carbon levels. For the third guide question, what are stomata? Stomata are small, pore-like openings on the surface of plant leaves, stems, and other organs. They play a critical role in the process of photosynthesis and gas exchange for the plant. And for the fourth guide question, in general, why do plants need photosynthesis to grow and survive? So the reason is energy production. So photosynthesis allows plants to produce their own food in the form of glucose, which is the primary energy source they use to power all the metabolic processes and support the growth. So plants need photosynthesis in order to grow and survive because photosynthesis, it releases oxygen. So as a byproduct of photosynthesis, plants release oxygen into the atmosphere, which is crucial for the respiration of other living organisms, including humans and animals. Another reason why plants need photosynthesis to grow and survive because of carbon dioxide absorption. So plants take in carbon dioxide from the air and use it as a raw materials for photosynthesis, helping to regulate the atmospheric carbon levels and mitigate the effect of climate change. The word photosynthesis comes from the Greek word phos, which means light, and synthesis, which means putting together. Plants get raw materials needed for photosynthesis from the soil, the air, and the sun. When it rains, water gets absorbed into the ground. Plants take water along with minerals from the soil through its roots. 
In the roots, plants have tubes called the xylem and the phloem. So tubes or veins which run throughout the plant's bodies and bring water and minerals from the soil to the leaves. Leaves take in carbon dioxide through the stomata and it is in the leaves of the plants that photosynthesis takes place. For the work example, the students will accomplish the grandeur of photosynthesis. So sunlight is an important component of photosynthesis. And this activity will help you understand its role in photosynthesis. For the objectives, identify the factors affecting the photosynthesis and respiration. And for the materials, Three same size jars with lead, desk lamp, distilled water, aluminum foil, eludia plant or any water plants, bromotemol blue or BTB solution and marker. For the procedure, first is wash the jars, then number the jars using the marker as 1, 2, and 3. The second one is to place the water plant, which is the eludia, in jars 1 and 2. Then fill the three jars with BTB solution. Put the lid on each jar and cover the jar to with aluminum foil so that no light can enter. Then place three jars in front of the desk lamp. Check the the color of the solution in each jar after an hour. After the students will conduct the experiment, the students will now answer the following guide questions. So the first guide question, what is the role of the desk lamp in the experiment? So in the setup, the desk lamp simulates sunlight, which is an essential component of photosynthesis. The light from the lamp allows the eludia plant in the jars to absorb photons and use the energy to convert carbon dioxide and water into glucose and oxygen, which is the key product of photosynthesis. And for the second guide question, did the amount of light affect the result and why do you say so? The answer is yes, the amount of light did affect the result in the experiment by covering one of the jars with aluminum foil to block out the light the researcher were able to create a controlled comparison between the jar exposed to the desk which is the jar one and the jar kept in the dark which is the jar two in the jar exposed to the light from the desk lamp, which is the jar 1, we could expect to see the BTB solution change color, indicating that the photosynthesis is occurring and carbon dioxide is being consumed. Conversely, in the jar keep in the dark, which is the jar 2, we would expect that the BTB solution to remain unchanged as the plant is unable to perform photosynthesis without the necessary light energy. And for the third guide question, what is the rule of the BTB solution in the setup? So the bromotimol blue or the BTB solution plays a crucial role as an indicator in this experiment. The BTB is a chemical that changes the color in response to the changes in pH. In this setup, the BTB solution is used to detect the changes in carbon dioxide levels that occur during the photosynthesis. So when the carbon dissolves in water, it forms carbonic acid, which lowers the pH of the solution. During the photosynthesis, the eludia plant in the jars will consume carbon dioxide and release oxygen. This will cause the pH of the BTB solution to increase, resulting in color from yellow-green, which is acidic, to the blue, which is basic. For the fourth guide question, what did you prove in this activity? 
through this experiment, the students were able to first is to demonstrate the light is an essential component for photosynthesis to occur. So the jar exposed to the desk lamp, which is the jar one, showed a color change in the BTB solution indicating active photosynthesis, while the jar keep in dark, which is the jar two, did not. Through this experiment, also the students were able to observe the rule of the carbon dioxide in the photosynthesis process. The consumption of carbon dioxide by the Eludia plant in the presence of light lead to the increase in the pH of the BTB solution, causing it to change color. For the fifth guide question, what is the rule of the alcohol in the experiment? So the alcohol, specifically the ethyl alcohol or the ethanol, it plays an important role in the experiment. So the alcohol is used to help remove the green pigment, which is the chlorophyll, from the leaf sample. For the sixth guide question, why should the leaves be immersed in boiling water and ethyl alcohol before testing for starch? So there are a few key reasons why the leaves are treated with boiling water and ethyl alcohol before testing for the presence of starch. So the first reason is it is disrupting the cell structures. So boiling the leaves in water helps to disrupt the cell wall and membranes, making the leaf tissues more permeable and allowing the chemicals to penetrate the leaf more effectively. Another reason why leaves should be immersed in boiling water and ethyl alcohol before testing for starch is by removing the chlorophyll. So as mentioned earlier, that the ethyl alcohol, it helps to extract and remove the green chlorophyll pigment from the leaf. This is an important because chlorophyll can interfere with the starch test, making it difficult to observe the presence of the starch. For question number 7, what happened when iodine solution was added to the boiled leaf? So when the iodine solution was added to the boiled leaf, the leaf turned a dark bluish black color. This color change indicates the presence of starch in the leaf. Iodine is a chemical that reacts with starch, forming a dark blue black complex so the intensity of the color change is proportional to the amount of starch present in the leaf the boiling and the alcohol treatment of the leaf prior to the iodine test was crucial as it removed the chlorophyll and other interfering compounds allowing the iodine to directly interact with the starch molecules in the leaf tissue for question number eight, based on your observation, what can you conclude about this activity? So through this experiment, we can conclude that the boiled and the alcohol-treated leaf sample contains starch as evidenced by the dark blue-black color change when the iodine solution was added. Also, we can conclude that the presence of the starch in the leaf indicates that the plant was able to successfully perform the photosynthesis, converting the light energy, which is the carbon dioxide, and water into glucose and other carbohydrates. Also, through this activity demonstrates a simple yet effective method for visually confirming the presence of starch, a key product of photosynthesis, in plants' leaves.